Nature's Weirdest Events, Season 3, Episode 1. How well we think we know our planet and nature of world still has the ability to surprise us, to shock us, and sometimes even scare us with strong and our behaviour. And given modern technology, nature's weirdest phenomena are now frequently caught on camera whenever or whenever they occur. So this means we can bring you the strangest stories our world has to offer. From a marine mammal causing a total gridlock to cane and commuters joined on five to five. A prickly problem invading America. To help with witnesses, experts and scientists are going to try and explain what on earth is going on. Nature's ability to delight and amaze us. Also powerful, even unstoppable force to be reckoned with. It's these amazing events. It usually doesn't appear and nature has taken over. We start with animals oddly out of place. Species are socially in the wrong place at the wrong time. They stop us in our tracks. From a creature creating a lethal handicap, a falling hole, to a likely hitchhiker across the continents. We start in Brazil, where an out of town visitor was causing trouble in paradise. Life from Brazil to Donic Scope find wide sandy beaches, usually laid back and lively. By March 2013, a astonishing animal peered out of the blue. Emerging from the Atlantic was a four-meter, three-ton elephant seal. Parents of a massive marine mammal war than often found in Antarctica took everyone by surprise. There's nothing compared to what the seal did next. A of the crowds is herded up the beach onto the busy street in town. Well, at least it, it used the crossing, but bizarrely traffic stopped a bit. So the event isn't unique. Back in 2000, the elephant seal in New Zealand created mayhem, a wrecking any part car in its path. So why are these enormous seals turning up in new charity and creating utter chaos? One of these events even surprised elephant seal experts like Patrick Robinson. Going into busy areas suspected with traffic and people is quite rare. Not abnormal for seal to venture away from the coast. They do not. They do that frequently, but they typically do not enter polluted areas, populated areas like that. So why did this seal taken? So what? Why had this ta- seal taken against the traffic? The answer lies in the time of year that he appeared. In the elephant seal Canada, October is when it happens. This happens. A elephant seal breeding season, when adult males are fired up by hum- hormones and fight for females. The stakes of these gladiators' battles are high. Fights often result with serious injury or even death. Seals in New Zealand chosen an unusual arena for battle, but is suffering from the same raging hormones as the males back on, a, on the beach. He is primed to fight anything his path. He is relatively close to these usual breeding beaches. But the elephant seal in Brazil was over 1,003 miles away from his nearest breeding beach. Could he really have travelled so far looking for love? Well, it's unlikely, actually. Because he arrived in March, so six months away from the sick meeting season, from the vacancy season. Perhaps the answer lies in a more secretive part. There lies elephant seals. Only spend their three months a year out of the water to breed or to molt. The rest of the year is spent thousands of miles out of sea. The sea. It can travel upwards of 5,000 kilometres away from the colonies during a typical migration. There are two migrations per year, so it adds up to quite a bit lot of a distance in swimming per year. That makes the epic journeys for the mo- one they make these epic journeys for one thing, food. Their favourite hunting grounds are the rich waters of Philantica Antarctica. This is where our seal should have been in March for twenty thirteen. So how did it get how did you get it so wrong? Well first we need to understand how to navigate. There is no inherent nav- navigation ability. We looked at individuals and never been to sea before and compared those their mother's satellite tracks. We collected and we see no correlation there. So we think it's just a fact made a random choice. In the very beginning, during the first migration, young seals hone their skills by trial and error. Their first few years are spent cruising the oceans. Given that they can cover vast distances in one long turn can take them off way of course. Just like it's still in Brazil, the seal is probably four or five years old. You probably hadn't locked into adult pattern yet. They may still be exploring and trying to find a good territory. In future, 
You likely to learn your sense of direction. The very dull city break. Getting in the way of finding food. A few days later, he did it back to sea. Out to sea. They say, oh, this is a case of practice makes perfect. For us, it's an unexpected counter with very, with very strange indeed. But even here in the UK, the odd, low, low, the old lost marine mammal makes a surprising appearance. Islands equally of the coast of Scotland are surrounded. They woke up one morning in March 2013 to find one and a half ton walrus. Given that this being is supposed to be 1,003 miles away, a North Pole is definitely more than a little lost. A relaxing rest. After relaxing with the Scottish Riviera, you got on, back on track and headed north. But some of the place animals aren't surprising, but they can be terrifying. Terrifying. But our next story, we head to Brisbane, Australia, where Cork Brook Golf Course members suck up the Oak Oak Queensland sunshine, playing satisfying and usually uneventful round of golf. Uneventful, that is, until players become suspicious. Wooden Hayden might be a little more haddies. Haddies. Anyone had them intended. Around 97, 98, when one of our members come in and tell us he's seen a fin out of this lake. Our members have a tendency to drink a little bit while we play, so we really just put it down to too much alcohol for the member. But as the weeks went by, some more golfers would put a strange activity in the lake. I was starting, standing on the green over there. I was, out, I was about to hit my ball when I heard a big, big splash. So I took I took a look up like this. Missed a putt by two feet, foot. So I think it's staring beneath the surface and rumours of the problem. The putter green was spreading. It's time for the course manager, Scott work, work staff, to investigate. You realise you must have something to deal with in here. But there might be some truth in the mystery. Yeah. Could one of the Lakers, many fish, be the culprit? Or well, the country now for large and potential lethal snakes? Or crocodiles. Could the golfers have something far more worrying on their hands? Well, what they discovered is far more shocking than he ever imagined. Cold on camera, miles from the ocean, was a shark. So how on earth was a marine monster living in a landlocked like golf course? A close inspection is an unusual rival. Turned out to be a bull shark. Amazingly, the club realised that more than one had moved into the lake. It really was a vulgar feature. With a terrible added bite. It is time to delve deeper and find out more about these sharks. These sharks, the sharks are usually found in warm coastal waters. They're skilled hunters. They cruise the oceans looking for anything to get their teeth onto. Shark expert Dr. Michael Midfahess thinks the golf have got some changing new members on its hands, but sharks have a reputation for not being, for being pretty damn aggressive. Well, we don't know why they can, can also be really unpredictable. They're big predators. They're one of the few species that would attack prey almost as big as they are. So they're dangerous predators that you need to give a healthy respect. The shark, bull sharks are actually one of the few species of shark are known as to be man eaters. Staying off the fairway, he could be, could have deadly same consequences. But hang on. Just how are these marine sharks living in fresh water? Those fish, 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 either live in fresh water or salt water. You can't move between the two because of the dramatic change in the salt level of salt. Yet these sharks seem to have done that, just that. Well, the fish that live in salt water, fish water, very different, really different challenges. Fish in salt water, they've got to hold on as much water in their bodies as they can, keep it from leaking out. But in fish water, they've got to keep water out of their bodies and keep it from flowing in. But not many amounts could fill both of these problems at once. It's really bull sharks and few other species who do these two things. Bull sharks have kidneys that can help them get rid of all that much of water coming into their bodies when they're fresh water. A lake really shouldn't be a problem for all of them physiologically. So thanks to some clever bull shark biology, these sharks sometimes can be seen very close to shore and can swim up rivers. That's the reason for the rays in fresh water. 
real benefit for adults to get into fresh water is probably to have the pups. Good place for them, because they have plenty of food and no bigger sharks would, could, would like to eat them. Is it, now it's more like than usual to find bigger mammals in fresh water, especially lakes. But there's many places in the world that happens. So this really is an extraordinary situation. Many bull sharks are now grown to about over 12 metres in length. What are these voracious predators finding to eat? Sharks are very self-sufficient. and got a number of fish species. Live in the lake, quite, live quite happily. Beans, probably the most prevalent. There's quite a lot of variety of fish that for sharks feed off. So it's a bit of a smoke spore, I guess, for them. With all this, with all this food and offer, the Gulf of Sharks are clearly feeling well above par. They are 12 in the lake, so there's real suspicion they're, they're breeding here. But given the lake is totally landlocked, how did the first shark get, got here? Well, the Gulf Coast is bordered by a river if it ever eventually joins the Pacific Ocean. But how did they make the leap between the river and the lake? The areas of the heart of the Logan River flood plain, and the mid 90s, the river went, which sits off the Gulf Coast, just, just burst its bank, flooded the coast across the Gulf Coast. We receded, and little surprises left in the lake. The flood waters would have washed, might have still washed in a few little, a few young bull sharks, which are fully quick to invade this new freshwater territory. Any other species probably would have not have survived. So we have do so do the golfers feel they're teeing off next of shark infested waters? Lake is quite well signed. Everyone is well aware. We don't demand any swimming. No bull for for seeking nothing like that. So we do our best keeping the sharks alive and also keep the golfers safe. In true Aussie style, the club's members seem to have taken off taken the visit to the stride. Well, we take, throw it, some chicken and in two sharks about eight foot and foot come up. Just, just quick, we'll see. Sharks aren't, aren't the worry, mate. It's the snakes around here. I've got to worry about. Our members absolutely love the fact they've got sharks here. They embrace it like nothing else, really. A monthly shark lake challenge must be one of the world's deadliest goings of golf. Certainly not a place to go fishing for your golf balls. Now, bull sharks have been responsible for 92 attacks on humans, principally because of their tolerance to fresh water. It means they can swim further up rivers and make come into contact with more people. So you're overseas, you might like to think twice about taking a freshwater dip. You've been right if you've been seen right up to Mississippi and right up to Ms. Amazon too, coming to Thames sometime soon. Let's hope not. We've we right waited today to not do more and more of these chucking appearances. We can catch the camera, right? Take this family had a lovely day out fishing South Carolina River. Until this happened, oh Jesus Christ, there's a shark, a shark, a shark. It's a big old shark, another bull shark. Turning up, where is he suspected? So he certainly wasn't worth work, work keeping your eyes peeled. The camera's running. Just, you just know what might turn up. For some expected animals don't travel in, in, under their stone steam. They hit to lift. For the next story, we travel to Washington State of America's west coast. In 20, March 2015, a mysterious boat washed up on the morning tide, crusted barnacles and draped in seaweed. His vessel was clearly spent many years at sea. Fisheries officer Annan Perez, one of the first people to see the angel boat, which on close inspection wasn't quite as empty as it looked. They found lots of kinds of mussels, and found several different I found lots of different kinds of mussels, and lots of diff- found several different kinds of crab. It was actually sea cucumber. The type of species never has been associated with marine debris before. It erects diversity of species on there, which gave us the first clue, of course, with something unique here. And then the boat reveals something astonishing. In the most seaweeds and barnacles, it was a tank, an old bait box. There is the way he was hiding, a saw a fish come right up the surface. You know, look around and go back and go down. Assured, it was one, if there is a one fish, there could be more. It turned out a five fish that hitched a ride on board. But this is the sole survivor. It's definitely not something you see in our air. It looks more like some of the fish. You see snorkeling in a tropical area. So how did the tropical fish end up in shipwrecked on the chilly shores of Washington State? First job was to cast the wet wide, finding identif- 
entered into the mystery traveller. Fisher transferred to experts of local decorum, where Keith Chandler settled into its uh, new home. He drove out there and found his incredible fish never that never seen before. The water was is in we got there was kind of sketchy, so he got got it clean water and perked up. He was concerned about what to feed it. So he tried different things he found. He really liked little pieces cut up with razor clam. And like I also like cam- salmon. So he also eats better than I do, very spoiled fish. They travelled the web to the web to find out more about his unsuspected guests. Or until they found something that took everyone by surprise. The fish was a striped beak fish. A battling discovery. Battling discovery was striped beak fish. They even call seas of China, Japan, and Korea. They don't migrate away from warm seas. So our fish is definitely one of the accidental tourists and a seasoned traveller. But how did it end up shipwrecked over 4,000 miles from home? It turned to turn, time to turn to the other evidence they had on the boat. A piece of information, information that's important to identify a boat. The areas were heavily encrusted with mangroves. We escape off some, whatever vegetation is there, we usually really lucky that his lettering was in a good place. So we actually read it. Is that is this is the name here? Sosoro Moro. The name is registration number had led to astonishing truth. A boat was from Japan, the same country. It was also home to striped beak fish. But the ocean currents alone would be likely unlikely to carry an object this size. Such a vast distance. Some extraordinary must have pushed the boat across the Pacific. And two years beforehand, another completely piece of said seeded a Christophic topic Trophic had happened to the shores in Japan. In March twenty eleven, Tsunami hit the coast of Japan. Devastation caused dragged some five million tons of debris over the into the Pacific Ocean. Now, most of the world, this would sunk without trace. About one and a half million tons of it floated away from Japan's coastlines. But it's not the first time this material was washed up the coast of America. No one thought that, like an animal like a fish could ever survive the journey. I've never seen anything like this in 34 years I've been here. A fish that came all the way from Japan to alive on the coast is fascinating. It turned out there was more than 300, over 30 different species on board. However, of all Noah's Ark, sailing in the high seas for staggering two years. So, just how did this all survive this incredible journey? Well, this hole may have been provided in my lifetime. It meant the boat was travelling partially submerged in the water. Stairways had full run of the ship. Obviously, this is a deep recessed area. Growth had come around it. They came around it had been to help protect it from the male and other species. It could be after the fish. So it's a really good area to escape. And it when it's hungry, it basically had its whole boat as a buffet. A boat become a floating aquarium, a mini ecosystem, a predator and prey is and held the key of survival group. Then a puzzling new discovery emerged. Fish is only one year old. Born long after the summer army, and set the boat to drift. How on earth was that? This possible. One for each of fish was born inside the boat to parents that slowly didn't survive the trip. There was that was hitched to lift at some point during the course of the boat's journey. But no what now what one of the very few places we know the straight beak fish occur is here, there in the Hawaiian islands. So could it be that after some army a coach and carrots carried a little boat all the way from here to, to, to in Japan, across the way, where the fish quite literally jumped ship and a further 2,500 miles all the way across in Washington State. Whatever happened, there's no doubt this low through tropping fish, an incredible venture of the high seas, a truly astonishing story of survival. But as remarkable as story is, we have to admit that animal stories frequently cause absolute devastation to new homes, boats are widely transported. Many species of new territories where wrecked havoc with life called lie of life. They're perhaps the greatest culprits of all of rats. These animals have been sailing the seven seas for centuries and adapt very well to new environments. As the consequences of this, they alone be responsible for between forty and six percent of all reptile and bird extinctions. 
What the legion of spectre visitors show us is what us that when it comes to survival, nature has a power to raise a new challenge wherever, anywhere. Whether it's the seals scoping out new dim- travel dimensions, sharks traveling and thriving, untreated territory, or fish cast adrift from home. Where the animals turn up, our turf, a possible gnaw. Now we're going to look at what happened when nature does expected and suddenly turns over our lives. With a stealthy invader, the deadly and defying secret. The shattering wave of ice that smashed up whole houses. We start in America's west of California. And most of this time it's pretty laid back in its hot, hazy state. Apart from a few days every year, America's west goes a very wild indeed. A matter of day and minutes, diving. Anyway, it comes a dangerous game of dodging. Oh my god, this true, this full scale invasion is worthy of daily triffits. A planet responsible tumbleweed. It is a tech of tumbleweed. Like a frog that's going to come through. So you've got the dust in the air, and so all of a sudden you see the cars appear out of nowhere. They hit a car, they just seem, they just scatter and smash it all as if it's on, and go and just integrate. Traffic gets a little bit crazy because they end up breaking and letting the tumbleweed cross. It's like all of a sudden you're slamming a brake on your brakes. Even on the ground, standing up the plant size of a human is easier to said than done. But wait a minute, this is the same plant famous for its camera rolls and appearances in West, American Westerns. Lonely, rambling weed. Well, don't believe everything you see in the movies. Because the wayward weeds can change trials across the landscapes of vast numbers. Crazy look at it. It looks out, look at, look at it, look out. It's just the start of the problem. Just look at what happens when something blocks the planet's path. Tanner Birksfield seems to bear the brunt of the problem. There, so there, they're like huge snow drifts. We have long fence that just covered down the whole side, about eight for miles, just a fence, nothing but tumbleweeds. But I drove in, I thought, oh my, oh my tumbleweeds were everywhere. Their planes were, were out to they're getting tumbleweeds. They had to take pitchforks and rakes and everything. So why a tumbleweed stay such a spectacular takeover? How and how so much has it ended up in Bakesfield? Well, to get to the root of this prickly problem, we need to start on California's dry and dusty roadsides. It's ensuring green shrubs look perfectly innocent now. It's what tumbleweed looks like. It's not moving at 50 miles per hour. A plant grows here all round without causing all any trouble at all. But what makes him such a menace on just a few days a year? When the rise of tumbleweed begins to dry out, it looks pretty dead and done, done for that. It's not. In fact, it's just a start. The dry begins to fold itself on itself, forming its crystalline shape. But it's about, also about the fact that it's becoming now fragile, particularly down in the root, which, really, which becomes really brittle. To the extent that it's an end, all it takes is a good gust of wind for this to snap and the plant begins to tumble. So the seasonal changes transform the tumbleweeds. Then, then we need, all they need is a push. When the Santa Fe and the winds come, they rock tumbleweeds and snap off their bases. They start tumbling last year with a number of tumbleweeds, thousands and thousands. Now Batesville is a set in miles of open land trapped between two mountain regions. So the very wind type funnel, the terrible weed straight down the town, was the town. The being in the fire line is only part of the problem. Year on year, these unruly weeds increase in number, tightening their strangle on the banks of the old field. We tend to think of plants as being very benign, of passive organisms, but in fact, they're terribly invalid as ruthlessly trying to colonize their new environments, and perhaps the most aggressive, all is the tumbleweed. The secret of its success is not the fact that it rolls over vast distances. It's also what it's doing. It's rolling. Listen to this. The rattlings around the, is the sound of 200,000 seeds contained within this tumbleweed. And all the while it's rolling, it's scattering those seeds by thousands and thousands. So when tumbleweeds roll in town, you do billions, so do billions and billions of seeds. And not really getting, and that's not, it's just not getting worse in Bakersfield. Throughout North America, tumbleweed is growing completely out of control. Little wonder we come to associate tumbleweed with pioneering spirit. West, American West, well, West. But supposing tumbleweed isn't actually American at all. 
actually brought in over by Ukrainian farmers in the 1800s. Merv is only face, now facing a trouble we take over. But now, Batesville and Padrona, John Sodorville, is heading for a showdown with problematic part, joining the world's first tumble leader. John's threshing gives up 10 tons of tumbleweed a day, which spreads and spreads and compacts the seed weed before it's a chance to run and shake its seeds. Had, had to have something done with these tumbleweeds in Batesville area. He thought, well, it just makes sense. John Invention is one part of the natural program. Halt these plants seemingly unstoppable spread. Because when a plant finds itself in charted new territories, the levers and invaders can plan the most impossible to control. Take note, weed. The UK's runaway own plant. UK's own runaway plant. The toys bought this delicate new little flower from Japan, thinking it might make a pretty addition to the collections. Don't take long for the knotweed to show its true colours. Rufus Vader got in the countryside and started to spread. Decades later, it's still on the loose. It grows so vigorously. It could crack concrete, roads and stolen walls. Nightmare for our sunners. Finer bricks and mortar devalued by tiny green weed. Dubbing these relentless green months is bish invasion is probably to be most impossible challenge. But some invaders take literally stealthy approach to their attack. Our next animal has been staged in a secret invasion, all thanks to rather remarkable talent. From its origin home, original home in the Caribbean, a tiny jellyfish has spread into all the world's oceans. It's likely been helped by its wired shipping activities, catching ride the ballast, ballast water on travelling vessels. But those, but not alone, can't explain its success. Scientists investigated, they were astonished by what they discovered. The jellyfish can do the seemingly impossible. It found a way to cheat death, to live forever, as something that helped. It's a global takeover. Well, do you, uh, that's how, uh, how is a jellyfish doing it? It's sort of a secret eternal life. Well, to understand that this animal's death to find feet, we need to get grips of the two main stages of jellyfish. A t- tiny tropidae, a layer with a large and full-grown mendusiae. Younger polyses form huge colonies like a jellyfish fish. A moment of group, they grow until it's time for them to form an independent medusa. Now, normally, the abandoned medusa could swim around for anything between a few days or a year, depending on the species of jellyfish. But the moment more tall jellyfish, hey, if something very strange happens, instead of growing old gracefully, the adult does something completely mind-blowing. Immortal jellyfish found a means of rolling back time. Ever can reverse the aging process, turn back to Polly, then with his feet so less amazing the caterpillar, turning to butterfly, and now the butterfly turning back to the caterpillar. But the thing that it doesn't, just doesn't happen once, as far as we know, the process can keep going backwards and forwards indefinitely. Anything stressful like injury or lack of food, turn the adult back to the top of the Polly, and that's a state it's easier to survive. So eventually the animals grow a new medusa and turn back on uh, to adult. The ingenious trick is to help fuel a stealthy global invasion. Jellyfish don't don't just take over a new territory, it never leaves. Now scientists are trying to find out which jellyfish genes are controlling the biological cock clock. Because whether it's sacred waters or high bright tech water breeding streams. Throughout history, us humans have strived to halt the grazing process. It seems our extraordinary animal is well ahead of us, and we're only one day, and could one day maybe you share its secrets of living forever. Well, at night, the church will take up the immortal jellyfish. Some invasions cause mass destruction one fateful moment. Our next story comes to Winnipeg, Canada. We're stunning scenery in a very, very overtwinkled lake. It's easy to see why people choose to live in the peaceful shores of Oko Bay Beach by May 2013, end of the hard winter, as the old peace and quiet was literally shattered. What literally shattered? Oh no, it's actually crazy. Well, nowhere have nine foot high wall of ice rose up and threatens the Gulf and Thai Street. Residents like Moles Mount Havilak could only stand there watching horror as their homes face to turn to army ice. Electric using energy freight trains to come, to come in 
Are you because you sl- almost seemed like that? It's mattered a ma- it's not happened a moment out of five minutes. You're probably going coming as about the same as you could walk. It just kept on moving. You're looking at it and you're thinking, Oh, that has got to stop. It didn't. Miles' friend was filming a second by second. The ice surged towards the house. We're about to get engulfed by ice. We're going to come through the house. All these houses are getting engulfed by ice. Bernard Williams Bellows was at home, as an Elmer, a moment that the ice struck. We stood and watched in amazement as the ice crawled out by a window, and boom, the whole thing broke. The ice started pouring into the living room. It came over the top of the roof and up top of, top of the chimney, which is at least six feet above the roof line, so it's at least 25 feet of ice. We grabbed, the ice, we grabbed our keys and got out. Just then, we had seen, but nothing, nothing would stop it. Nothing, everything went quiet. Please, the ice has only stopped as suddenly as it started. Just ten terrifying moment, minutes. Most of the street had been wiped out. So what had the residents of Oakley Beach just witnessed? Well, the cause a giant wave of ice break over the houses. There's no doubt that ice can be a very powerful force. It sculpted much of our planet. A layer of snow built up with a compress and catch creek glacier. Their mass, sheer mass made them flow down through the landscape, covering a whole solid rock below. It might travel just a few meters every year, but it's sped up footage shows over time this moment makes a quite an impact. But these processes often take millennia, not minutes. So what caused such a dramatic and quite ch- quick change in ice at Oakwood Beach, which everyone's dropping as low as minus 20 degrees over the winter by May, the lake had been frozen, and still for five months. So what happened to such a catastrophe? Grassy expert Michael Michelle Coppies thinks in very peculiar conditions may have been at work. In the middle of winter, the ice is still stuck together. Resistant motion. By the time it starts to break up the spring water, it start, may, can start to move. By May, the cracks are starting to show. The 200 square miles of lake ice are melting and moving around. But as ice is falling, it's usually springtime schedule. Other forces must have been at work. So is anything else unusual about the fateful day in spring? Well, that afternoon, the weather changed dramatically. We were ditching high winds, but at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it's calm as calm. Could be at 6 o'clock. In the night. It's absolutely unbelievable. My daughter said, Look at the trees, Dad. The trees and our and our front lawn would double down. Look they were touching the ground. I was surprised they didn't break. The sudden start of a storm it completely changed how ice behaved. Many often times when you have rapid warnings it will be warnings in springtime. They make for they also have stormy conditions. So as a rat ice rat starts to break up, you have a big wind gust of storm event. You start to push on the ice and get into the raft under the shore. we always probably 15 feet up in the air. What is it? And it hits land. Land is friction on sort of the ice. It's the first to hit the land stops. All the ice has pulled up and it kind of crumbles on top of it. So it looks like a slow wave of coming ashore, but basically all the ice, tumbling over the ice, has stopped the perfect storm of miles of falling ice. Gale force winds blowing towards the shore created a terrifying tsunami. So powerful, literally knocked the community sidewards. So many homes are just knocked out of their foundations. And one sitting back, it was almost on its back. It had been pulled, tilted up, pushed over, and other ones were left destroyed and crushed. I guess you were in shock. At least, at least I was because I didn't think, you know, it was going to get that bad, but it did. Thankfully, events like this only have been documented a few other, handful of other places. Mummy Oakley Beach was hurt. It had taken a lot of hard graft and community spirit. It was slowly repaired of damage. A deteriorating play of nature, the most powerful form, of course, a most terribly horrific event, those house owners. Also, I suppose, proof that as much as we learned, live along nature, it can still catch us out. It's an unpredictable force. Shocking stories like to remind us of true power of nature. Where it's introducing an aggressive plant, overseas is welcome. Jellyfish invader with surprising secret. Or the ANC storm events triggering a terrific ideal, terrifying deal. When nature takes it over, there really is no way stopping it. Next we meet unstoppable animals and superpowers. Specialist animals, 
Such as skills to survive in a situation for an environment and Phoebean assassin to escape artist extraordinaire. We start on Russian hour, rush, rush hour. The Nesco Metro is one of the world's busiest. Every day, there's around 7 million people in and out of the city. Amongst the crowd, making their way for the trains, the tunnels, new to the city circus, a selected band of remarkable dogs. Not they are not an owner at least leaves the site, but every day for the last 25 years, these animals join the local commute. They stare at their the seats, pass their skew, the trains, and carefully mind the gap. They never miss their stop. Because as strange as it might seem, their behaviour appears to be entirely deliberate. So what's bringing these dogs into the trains? Where are they going? Gummy, Susanna and MacDonald have been studying how do- animals adapt to city life. Who thinks a dog's background might help explain their behaviour? It only makes sense for dogs to do this. They're feral, so they don't have owners. So clearly, they must be homeless dogs. You need to find food every day. So this is a great way to do that. You also get social contact, where it's great, which is great. So I think you would see this kind of even city where there is a large population of feral dogs. Moscow certainly has that. Over 35,000 stray dogs live in the city streets. It's tough life for a competition for food and shelter is fierce. Band pets are born on the streets. Their dogs face a dilemma. They, have been, they don't have owners to care for them. A years of selective breeding stripped away the natural hunting skills of a true wild dog. And such an enormous number of stray dogs from us, that musker mutts need to be incredibly resourceful to survive their dog, dog eat dog world. They moved to the new territory and taking advantage of the captive audience. If dog, uh, you saw, if you were a dog and saw a human, and humans gave you food, one day you followed a human, and the human went down the train, human petted you, and you told you how great you were, and everybody on the train was nice to you, you would then go off to the, the train. You followed a human, someone fed, fed you. You might say, the train is a good place. Yes, you, so you might do that again. Dogs are really fast learners, so I think, which spread through a population of stray dogs very, really quickly. In fact, it comes to finding food. Several other animals around the world have also discovered the perks of public transportation. There's monkeys working, the crowds of trains of India, or pigeons taking a short hop in London Grand, Great Portland Street. There's a circle line. This is a circle line, Mohammed Smith. Well, but what does Moscow, Moscow motor dogs are doing? Much smarter than scrounging. Well, the scientists followed the dogs on and off the trains, astonished by the, what they found. About 30, 20 dogs were making a regular commute. The most remarkable, the stations were using were no, were no coincidence. They were coming from um, a place where they slept, which would be the outskirts of the city. They would probably go where it's quiet at night. You only really go somewhere where they can actually sleep with other dogs. And in daytime, they can go downtown, where they can hit up a, a tourists for food and looks sad eyed and get some snacks and you know that sort of thing so it's sort of like you go to, from the suburb at night to the day jobs downtown is the first only place this incredible area has been seen but how they're finding their way through the ma- through maze of tunnels surely it can't be easy on a map navigating these complex warrens of tracks platforms and stages difficult as for humans but hell on earth the dogs do it they can't read maps well even if well, even in the heart of Moscow, see, these stray animals are using the same insects, sense as wild species of dogs do. All and dogs, wild or reversing, have a sense of smell, which is over 10,000 times better than ours. So, uh, what someone, uh, somewhere smells like, tell them, more than location than any map. Dogs also have a strong biological body cot. So dogs on the metro may be using that time their daily active routine is remarkable how well these dogs have adapted their behaviour to make the most of human activities. It is unless as they know more about us than we know about them. It does have been remarkably resourceful in terms of modifying their foraging behaviour. In order to survive, they really are top dogs. Meet our next animals are soup, like superhuman squirrels who travel to Alaska in North, to North America, where in 20, August 2010, fishing party, we were doing more than they bargained for. Huge two and a half meter octopus, providing enough catch. But what it, what it did next had people staring in disbelief. He was going for it. No way. 
I tell you right now. So everyone's major began to disappear in front of the eyes. Yeah, there was a nose. It's just all the way through it now. So, oh, just got, got, just got his nose, huh? There he goes. Oh, wow. How did this new creature manage to make an exit worthy of Dini? A wide octopus and the ultimate skate artist. The other beat boat was a giant Pacific octopus. To tip to tip, they reach up to nine meters in length. So I'm surprising them were less well, this. So related to other sea creatures like oysters, mussels, and sea snails. I like most of the other members of the group. Octopus don't have a hard shell, making them a hard, soft target for predators. Could you explain why they need to make such a quick getaway? Octopus expert James Woods is studying the genius defense tactics. Octopus is all the part of the predators want to eat. Sharks eat them, marine animals like dolphins and seals eat them. So no, no birds eat them. They can't find something that's pretty hard to eat. So the primary defense is camouflage. A king of camouflage is aptly named Mimic Octopus. This animal can take on a colour nearly every, any setting it finds. Markley also copies the state with other three creatures, impersonating anything from a flatfish to a sea snake in order to protect itself. Even if an octopus can does all its predators, illusions, it does have one another trick. It results to plan B, escape. This is where not having an outside outer shell or a skeleton is real advantage. But on many species of animal, the limit to how small a gap they can squeeze through is not governed by a skeleton. The whole, but uh, that's their skull. But of course, octopus don't have skulls. They're soft-bodied animals. The only hard bit of an octopus is the mouth parts. They the beak, they and they are about five centimetres diameter, so the beak can squeeze through, the rest can follow. So, our octopus and the fishing boat, a full gap was all it needed, but how it did, how did it calculate its size and shape and environment around it so quickly? Well, search, new search showing, octopuses are far smarter than you think. Octopuses, most intelligent of all interbrates. They have brain to body weight ratio that's higher than other groups of vertebrates, of fish and birds. Octopus nervous systems is very different to ours. We have a head, also our nerves up here. There's well, some nerves in the wiring to our extremities. Well, octopus does not have a centralized brain, but two thirds of its nerves are body. The more the decentralized system, sort of like an internet, is something like us, where it's pretty much all up here. It's critical to think this animal with its brain power split up all over its body. It means even its disaster tricks. It's, they always think, but they think straight. If the octopus loses an arm, and their arm acts. Which, if it loses arm, the arm will act as a decoy. You hold on to things with suckers. You can change, change colour. It can wiggle. It can crawl around. So it acts a very efficient decoy. It might keep the predator occupied. It might, it's got something to eat, busy while the rest of the octopus gets away. So the octopus is, Virtuality, already has driven them to become quick thinking masters of hide and seek. As sometimes, only when it's five, take more conventional approach. A move range versus a Cameroon, a last well where three travellers have visited. But some of those who have tail tales, tail tales are bizarre looking animal, more than ready to put up a fight. A beast capable of drawing blood from its attackers. Only a few specimens exist, but surprising the culprit. Is it is this a frog? But what is this amphibian oddity? What does it deserve its fierce reputation? Most amphibians prefer to stay out of trouble or hiding out from danger, use a camouflage to stay under the radar. But they are those are a bold approach, use brighter colours, make a statement of warning predators their bodies are loaded with harmful toxins. But such images aren't enough for frog. It may be small, but its violent reputation has given it the name Wolverine fog. Amphibian expert David Blackman knows more than most about this elusive and mysterious animal with ninja like skills. There's no other frog on earth that looks like this. Very on the side of the body, his legs, here it's covered with what looks like hair. In fact, actually, thin pieces of skin reject out from the side of the body. But he was like this at Tolly, so this is something that was neat to only male frogs. Hairy frogs. It's still not clear why male frogs would need its excess skin. 
There's not only a thing to keep them the experts guessing, because their animal is also armed for combat. Well, the remarkable thing about this frog is it has claws, but most cameras don't have claws. And they ain't claws, and these claws ain't claws like toenails, I think. Fingernails. They're not like claws like you find on a bird. It's actually a claw. It's only that's made of naked bone. Unbelievably, when it's threatened, that this animal can force its own bone for its skin, aiming itself with sharp claw on its teeth, toes. And it's actually making its skeleton conquer its skin. It's a very weird thing. It's not like there's. It's not like there's a natural hole through which its claws are piercing. Is there's it's that there's a complex piece of skin that cows actually penetrating through, actually causing little traumatic wound on their fingertips. We know very little about whether or not these wounds can be healed. These claws could soon be retracted and sensed and can be used another day because amphibians and other reptiles really have remarkable regenerative abilities. Will we folk really are a certain unique separation of just how strange nature can be? So among these other, are more than 6,200 species of frogs, all these thousands of frogs, there are only one large hairy frog, like frogs, with bones that poke for their toes. There's only one in the world that looks like that. But as only there are other amphibians who can be skin of their partners in crime. Even if it is an introvert note, in, interbrain newt. Remarkable in that, they attack predators, they can flush their ribs through the flesh, out through the skin, and produce, produce two rows of spine, which run the length of the body. Now, this sounds like it will be very painful for the newt, but in fact, it does no harm at all. Perhaps that's even more remarkable. As long as the ribs pass through the skin, they pass through some poisonous glands, and you can feel them on the side of the body. So, effectively, they end up with two rows of poison arrows. Now, of course, it's, if you're a predator, yeah, that's pretty nasty. You've got to admit, it's also very, very clever. The weird and wonderful creatures in these stories have developed extraordinary powers to get what they want, whether it's canines committing a scram, get a square meal, shape shifting sea creatures, highly armored, armed, armed amphibians. Nature has a very ending ability to surround us. So, whether it's bizarre adaptations of full scale invasions, nature survives against the odds. And even thrives in places where we would least suspect it. And when our paths cross, it proves to be truly unstoppable false.